All right, now that I've made my priest on Gladiator Sanctum, I wanted to kind of go over the talents that I selected as well as the PvP talents to kind of just talk about like why I chose what I did and maybe so people can better understand how I end up playing this priest right now. <laughs> I mean, I definitely wouldn't say that I'm entirely, you know, very familiar with everything because I haven't PvP'd on my priest in a very long time, so I'm kind of just picking things up as I go. But let's go through the first tier. So I would say that the first tier is actually maybe a little bit confusing in terms of how certain I am about what I choose, but I think that since Disc right now is dealing a lot, a lot of damage, I oftentimes pick up Schism because if you apply to someone, it increases the damage you deal to them by 40%. That's a lot. So for a lot of healer DPS comps, I will most likely always take Schism. That way I can output a lot of damage, which pressures them very hard. But Castigation, I will probably take for double DPS comps. And Twist of Fate, I mean, it's a pretty decent talent, but the thing is it only gives you a buff if they are under 35%. So that doesn't feel like a benefit you are getting as often as the other talents, so I don't think I will end up taking Twist of Fate. So the second row is done deal. Angelic Feather, always. It's just great for movement, and I think it's more versatile than Body and Soul because Body and Soul has a six second cooldown, and even though Angelic Feather does have a recharge time, you don't use it that often that you tend to run out, I feel like, unless you're like, chasing somebody endlessly. Sometimes players do that where they're low and they just freaking run around the map trying to live. You have to chase them, so that's a little annoying. But yes, Angelic Feather always. For the next row, I'd say that I would definitely take, take Mindbender because one minute is pretty short and it also gives you mana back. And so far, I feel like if I am playing offensively and if we usually have the advantage, then I'm not often out of mana, and I don't want to end up out of mana even if I'm spamming smite and stuff. So I think Mindbender is great, and it can be kind of like, you can pair that stuff with Dark Archangel, and I feel like it will just really bump up your damage. For the level 60 tier, no contest, Psychic Voice, uh, that makes your fear every 30 seconds, and I love using fear. I think it's so good. Shining Force, I could maybe see you using, but a lot of melee classes nowadays have a gap closer they can use right after you use Shining Force, so I'm not really sure if that will ever be worth it. For row 75, definitely Sins of the Many. If you're doing twos or threes, you will at most only have two atonements up at a time. It doesn't actually tell you how much it diminishes with every additional ally, but it's a damage buff, and the other two talents on that row just don't really seem appropriate for PvP. For row 90, Perch the Wicked, for sure. Divine Star and Halo are really awkward. I really don't think those are appropriate for PvP either. And then, for the final row, Luminous Barrier is great. Lenience, um, Atonement reducing damage taken by 3%, is meh. I mean, Luminous Barrier, is nice because power word barrier forces you to stand in a certain location i don't like that so luminous barrier is nice plus there's also a pvp talent that reduces it to two minutes so you can actually use it pretty often okay now on to the pvp talents so for the first one it relates to crowd control so i'm actually looking at my computer screen right now so forgive my eye contact but for the most part i am mostly using relentless because i feel like 20% reduction on all crowd control is a really good benefit. I think the only times I'm taking Gladiator's Medallion is if it's double DPS comps or specific comps that have so much CC that don't DR with each other that if you get caught in that, then your partner is 100% dead. Sometimes Mage Rogue is like that if they coordinate very well, so I would take it just for that, but other than that, I've been mostly using Relentless. I am also taking Searing Light, which increases the damage of Smite by 15%, and it also reduces the cooldown of Penance by one second every time you cast it, which is crazy good because Smite is very short cast. Penance is already a relatively short cooldown at 9 seconds, but if you're smiting like crazy, your Penance will be up very often. I'm also taking Trinity, which is, I think, default. It seems amazing, 
Duration of atonement is increased by 15 seconds, which puts it at 30 seconds, which is really long. So you just buff them once, and then you just spam your DPS for a while, and they'll have atonement for a long time. It also increases the healing done by atonement by 20%, which is even better, which is even better because if you spend all that time DPSing, it could actually keep your partner topped off. The maximum of three targets doesn't really matter because I'm doing twos and threes. And then the last one is Dark Archangel. It's a one minute cooldown and increases the damage of you and anybody with atonement by 15% for eight seconds, which is awesome. This though might be the one PvP talent I might switch out for Dome of Light if it's double DPS. Uh, Dome of Light reduces the cooldown of the Luminous Barrier, which is the big bubbles that you put on people that replaces Power Word Barrier, and it also increases the Absorb, which is awesome. So only taking that if it's double DPS, that will potentially rape you otherwise, but for these, I actually feel like priests have less options compared to Druid because I feel like the rest of the talents are kind of lackluster, but for the most part, what I've noticed at times is that the thing with priest playstyle right now is at times I kind of have difficulty knowing which style of play is better. So right now for the most part I am trying to spend a good amount of time keeping both targets dotted up with Purge the Wicked and then spamming DPS on them. And then if I can, I would always try my best to do double fears because those are amazing. They're, they always feel so good when you get them because you do a jump and I don't know if they ever fix this, but usually when you jump in fear, it kind of makes the AOE a bit larger than it's supposed to. That's what it feels like. So if you get that double fear, then the healer can't dispel the DPS, and it's just very disruptive every time you do that. But there are different things that I could do. Like if I just spend all my time opposite sides of the healer and I'm just spamming DPS on their DPS, it might actually be pretty good because this damage is really high right now so it really can be tough for them to out heal two kind of feels like you're a second dps right two people on their target and at least when i was on my druid whenever we fought priest rogue it was really tough if all they did was dps and like the priest wouldn't always need to cc me that much if the rogue just did a blind sap on me that is in itself awful enough, but if the priest steered me and then mind controlled me also, then it's bad. But that's actually something I'm kind of, um, <laughs> I kind of need to incorporate more, is trying to fear and mind control a little bit. Because right now I'm playing like strictly DPS the shit out of the mindset, which works all right right now, but I'm pretty sure we could secure a few more kills if I mind control a little bit more. This, this gameplay is, definitely something to get accustomed to but at the same time I don't I don't really like feeling this oddly powerful this was the hybrid issue I brought up as to what I don't really like about PvP in this day and age they make DPS classes able to heal and they make healing classes able to do the damage and I don't like that maybe I am old school and maybe I have an old soul but it just feels like it ruins things when roles can do more than one role. So just in the past or just even currently, like I don't like it when DPS classes can heal. I don't like when Boomkins and Feral Druids can heal pretty well. And it just seems like it ruins things because a healer DPS comp to me, healer should mainly be healing. And if they ever play offensively, it's to crowd control. It's not to deal damage. And DPS, DPS only and then crowd control. I prefer that. So if matches get prolonged and they last a while because a DPS class is able to heal up their partner and prevent them from dying and stuff, then I'm not a fan of that. The thing is that I'm actually surprised about is that matches are reasonably short. They're not incredibly long like they used to be. They used to be 15 to 20 minutes long and I couldn't stand them. So nowadays it seems like it's capping out at six minutes, which isn't the worst, but definitely an improvement, I guess. So I will be putting up more Disc Priest Arena videos for sure. This is very nostalgic for me. <laughs> Just include one last thing. 
which is, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I've kind of realized after playing so many games these past two days is that even though initially I was really excited to be playing arenas again and to be doing PvP again because I had a lot of great memories of it in the past, right now I feel like the state of at least that beta server is not in a very good place because nowadays it feels like I am encountering a ton of games. I'd say close to 100%, obviously it shouldn't be that guaranteed, but it's pretty up there where games are won based on crits and luck and aside from that, if you ever sit in more than one CC chained and you don't have a way to get out of it, there is a very high chance that your partner dies and I don't, I don't really like stuff like that because it makes it really hard to play around things because in the past, you would have to really coordinate very well to do a CC chain on somebody when their trinket is down. And usually even at that point, it's not that easy to kill someone where it's guaranteed. But right now it feels like if I ever eat a CC chain and I don't have Gladiator's Medallion, or even if I have Relentless, my partner is dead. Or if you play against a rogue, if they get lucky in Venom crits, people can die in two globals. And I'm not really having fun playing these matches where a lot of it is luck based like that or even just sitting in CC and damage being so high that your partner can't live through it no matter what so not really sure I'm gonna keep playing more of it because it's very one dimensional right now it feels and it's not fun when you win based on luck even if you win I don't want to win because of a crit that took away 50% of their health so Hopefully they figure out a way to fix stuff like that, but I guess I mainly played this server for fun and I never really planned on playing it on live, so I guess technically it doesn't really affect me that much.